everybody, today we are going to be creating our own piece of artwork in the style of Kandinsky. Hopefully you've all had a chance to have a good look at the PowerPoint we have sent for you in your higher learning and learnt a little bit about him. You might notice that in the background I'm listening to some music. It's a type of music that Kandinsky listened to when he was doing his painting. I wonder if you can remember the musician that created this piece of music. Now, we have sent you home a piece of paper that looks like this. Hopefully you've managed to print it out. This is going to be the background and the base of your piece of artwork. So we have got some different squares there that we need to fit in. One of the famous paintings that Kandinsky did looks like this. It's called Squares with Concentric Rings. That means that all of the circles fit inside each other. So we're using this painting to inspire our own today in the style of Kandinsky. So I've started by just drawing some circles with a pencil in one of my squares. Now I didn't take very long doing that because as you can see from Kandinsky's, they're not perfect circles. They haven't been drawn um, using something as a stencil, he's just done it freehand as he's gone round. Some of them are a bit squashed, some of them are fat, and some of them are actually looking a little bit square if you look at them carefully. So I'm going to do a few more now to fill up the rest of my grid. Now, make sure you just keep your circles inside there. Now, once I've done all of those, I'm then going to choose how I'm going to colour those circles in. Now my first choice is going to be the poster paints that I've got here. And I chose those because they're such bright, vibrant colours, similar to the colours that Kandinsky has used in his painting there. So I'm going to just show you carefully. Now remember to hold your paintbrush right at the tip like that, as if you're holding your writing pencil exactly the same way, because then you have got more control over your paintbrush. Now, I might actually change my mind a little bit as I'm going around to fill that bit in really carefully. There, I might put a bit more on there, so it's all nearly changed colour then. That's it. Give my brush a wash because so I'm going to change to another colour now. I think Kandinsky has used quite a lot of reds and oranges and yellows, so I think I'm going to do the same. I'm going to just fill in, oh, my hand's a bit shaky. Fill in there, try and go around. I think I might need to use a smaller brush for that bit. Luckily, I've got a few brushes here. if you can still see a bit of your pencil line. You won't be able to notice it once all of those colours are dry. Uh, a bit of yellow. Always make sure you wash your brush carefully before you use the yellow, otherwise it goes muddy, muddy colour. There we go there. Oh, I've got that nice. This colour is called magenta like a pinky red. Ooh, it's a very thin brush that one. It's very relaxing listening to the same music that Kandinsky listens to. I can see why he enjoyed painting and listening to that at the same time. So I'm going to keep going until I've filled in all of that square. I'm going to do a bit more yellow I think but to fill in this big one I'm going to use my big brush because remember, he wasn't that careful really with his either, but the overall look is very effective once you've got all of those paint colours together and all of the circles and your whole page is filled up. I'm going to show you mine at the end of the video. It looks really, really fantastic. So let's do one more, I think. Another bit of yellow, like nice and bright. Go. 
then I probably should paint in just these little corners as well because we don't want to leave any white gaps and once you've done yours obviously you can send it in to all of the teachers here at Malvern Way and hopefully we can use some of them up on a display somewhere we can keep the real paintings if you can keep yours and we can have them up in school and I think they'll look really lovely when they're all up together right so if you've got paints at home you could use paints like that for my next one I think I'm going to use felt tips you could use all of the same or you can use different you could use coloring pencils you could use crayons pastels are lovely because they're really bright colors as well a bit like these poster paints that I've got here so felt tip pens nice and easy these are nice big ones as well that I found in Mrs Shahin's classroom nice big marker pens which sometimes are not the best thing to use when you're doing your artwork but it depends on the style of artwork you're doing and for this I think they work quite well let's just go around there gone for a bit of different colour now, I've gone for a nice dark purple which is quite a contrast to the colours I've used earlier there. I do quite like a bit of green with purple so let's try a bit of that and see how that looks. Has he used any purple? He has used a little bit of purple there. Purples and yellows. Maybe we'll do a bit of, let's see what we've got next. I've got Okay, right, I'm going to finish that one off later and I'll show you at the end of the video what it looks like because I'm going to show you the next step now. So once you've completed all of your grid and it's completely covered and it's looking really nice and colourful, it should look quite similar to this painting. But we're going to go another step further and use this. So this one is a tree of circles. So we're going to use the idea of the tree and we're going to combine that with our first piece of Kandinsky artwork. Those concentric circles making up parts of the leaves on the tree and it looks really fantastic. So we're going to use both of those ideas and put them together. And maybe once you've done it this way, you could think of your own new piece of artwork that might incorporate some of his other ideas to make another completely new picture. But how we're going to do the tree is to try and create a sort of silhouette that's going to go over the top and over the front of our concentric circles. So I'm at school, so I've got some black sugar paper that I found up in the cupboard. But if you don't have any black sugar paper at home, you can use normal paper and you could colour it in using a black felt tip pen. Or you could find a piece of cardboard from a cereal box, maybe open it up and colour that in black and then stick that over the top and use it that way. Or it doesn't even have to be black, it could be a different colour. But as long as it's just one whole colour, it should create the uh, silhouette over the front because it's a contrast against the very colourful background and then having a very plain colour over the top. So on my black paper I'm just going to draw a rough outline of a tree similar to this one behind me. It's very um, sort of spindly I would describe it so it's not very um, real life. It looks a little bit abstract which is another one of the words that we learnt in our PowerPoint about Kandinsky. Some of his work is quite abstract, which means it's not necessarily something that is real life. Now this combines both of those things because we've got a real life tree, but then we've got the abstract side of the concentric circles mixed in with it. So I'm just going to look back and see, just check how my tree is looking. I need to be careful that it's going to fit on top of my concentric circles 
you probably can't see this at the moment, but once I've started to cut it out, hopefully, then we might be able to see what it looks like. I'm not sure it's going to look exactly like Kandinsky's, but that's okay because it's not his artwork, it is mine. And yours will look different as well. Everybody's will be inspired by the same thing, but look different. Okay, I'm going to try and cut that out and see how it looks. I think it should fit over the top. Now, remember, when we're holding our scissors, our thumb is going to be at the top, and it's going to be facing up to the ceiling. Our thumbnail is facing up to the ceiling, and we're going to keep our scissors pointing away from us and move the paper and the scissors, okay? We don't want to twist our arm around like this when we're cutting because that's going to spoil the shape of our tree. We're going to try and turn the paper. So when I get to the branches that go around, I'm going to turn the paper rather than turn my scissors because then we will get into a bit of a muddle. Let's see if I can do it. Now, try not to make your branches too thin because then they will be extra tricky to cut out. You know if cutting out is something that you find challenging. Some people find it something they really need to concentrate on because it is quite a tricky skill to cut out neatly. Remember, hopefully you've got a pair of children's scissors at home because they're much easier for you to use just because they're much smaller in your hand. If you haven't got any children's scissors at home, then you might need to ask a grown-up to help you if there are only big scissors in your house. Let's see. So I'm nearly there, I'm back. Halfway through my tree. It looks like quite like lots of trees at school at the moment have got no leaves. It's been really cold. Even had a bit of snow this week. A few snowflakes coming down. So mine's definitely a winter tree. Yours could be a summer tri summertime tree. So instead of having lots of stick branches, it might have some leaf shapes here, so as you can see I'm nearly done, keep turning my paper, keeping my scissors pointing away from me, minding this hand so I don't snip my fingers. Okay, so that I can use for something else another day. And there is my tree. So I've got my branches. And down here I've got some roots. Which... So once I've got my silhouette cut out like this, I am going to get a glue and I'm going to stick it over the top of my concentric circles. Okay, so it's going to look a little bit like this. Now, I'm going to stop my video now and I'm going to finish all of my circles some of them I'm going to paint, some of them I'm going to use some more felted pens, and then I will show it to you when I'm finished.